this is Michelle Lambert, and welcome to the MUSE Virtual Product Showcase, Tools and Services to Optimize Your Use of Meditech Scanning and Archiving Module. I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items before we get started. You're muted. You're in the listen-only mode. Now you have two options for audio. You can either use your telephone or your computer's microphone and speakers. You can switch between the two by expanding the audio tab on your GoToWebinar control panel and then selecting the radio button at the option you'd like. If you have any questions during the webinar, you will need to type them into the question box located on your GoToWebinar control panel, or you'll be able to ask a question vocally by clicking the yellow hand icon. When you click this icon, I can then unmute you so you can be heard while asking your question. If you plan to vocally ask a question and you're logged into the audio with your computer, you need to ensure you have a working microphone or switch to the telephone option. I will read the questions in order in which they are received at the end of the webinar. I also want to let you know we are recording this webinar today. Since this is a product showcase, I have a small disclaimer statement I need to read. Muse International does not endorse any product or service discussed during this webinar. Any opinions or views expressed are not those of Muse International. Now I'd like to introduce our presenters from Ford Advantage. Please welcome Steve LaRue, Director of Migration Services, and Todd Ledyard. Uh, sales director. Now I'd like to turn it over to Todd. Well, thanks, King. I appreciate uh, appreciate the opportunity here to uh, discuss some of our technologies and, and service offerings. Um, we're going to walk you through a number of different items. I think we've got an agenda slide coming up here pretty quickly. So from a high level, we're going to talk about a number of different technologies that we provide to customers. Almost all of these were technologies that were either identified by customers or ones that customers requested from us that we, we in essence, helped build or develop with, with their uh, workflows in mind. So we'll talk a little bit about Remitit, which is our automated A35, A37 report formatting tool. DISC is our conversion technology, and we'll dive into that a bit more, and some of you may have worked with us in the past in regards to legacy data conversions. The Historical Archive Viewer, another technology that we have for displaying legacy data if you don't have a, a solid endpoint for that data to be hosted. Find It is our optical character recognition tool for Meditech's business office scanning and also has some other purposes. We'll talk a bit about Capture It. Capture It's a technology that in essence provides us a scanning tool uh, to get data into our Find It application. And then lastly, Rapid Filer, which is a technology that we've developed with some customers that helps automate data entry into the e-chart for Meditech. Next slide, please. So we'll talk a little bit about Remitit. Next slide as well. And, and Remitit in general is a, a technology that we built at the, the bequest of some customers. In essence, they had 835s and 837s that they were using in their finance office. And they weren't able to do the kind of things with those documents that they wanted. They were printing them. They were trying to put them into a standard format. They're trying to make them look pretty. Uh, there was a number of different things they were trying to do. So in essence, what we can do with Remitted is parse those and put those into a more formatted report that can be filed into Meditech, into uh, the BAR application, or can be put into our Find It application for easy reference and easy location. And Steve's going to dive a bit more into that, and I'll let him kind of dive into the details um, and let you read through those those images later. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I'll start by talking about the 835 process and how that works. Um, so we take the incoming 835 raw files, uh, which are jumbled and unformatted. We'll pull up a sample of those in a minute. And those also also have a number of accounts in one file. So the way the processing works is we split those remits by individual accounts or individual UCRNs and then apply them in a nicely formatted template to make it easily viewable for a, a user in BAR or in our Find It solution. Um, we convert those files to PDF or TIFF or text or really any format that's desired. If it's going into Meditech's cold feed, uh, we'll generally use the PDF or TIFF. Um, again, we can deliver to find it or Meditech ECM. And then the validation piece um, is a nice option. Uh, we can tie into Meditech's PR to make sure that we have a valid UCRN or account number before we file through the ECM filer. Um, those of you familiar with Meditech's ECM cold feed filer um, probably know that the most common rejection is when the account number is invalid. Uh, so this really cuts down on the rejections up front. Um, if something is invalid from a UCRN or account number standpoint, we can put that aside for manual review, or we also have a tool that could help with that processing that we'll get into a little bit later. 
This is just visual workflow of everything I just went through. Um, remit documents come in, we apply them to the template, extract any relevant met metadata, which allows us to name the file appropriately for the ECM filer. Um, convert to PDF and rename. Uh, again, we can also convert to TIFF if uh, that's better for your ECM filing process, and we send them into Metatech. Uh, within Metatech, generally you set up the form so that it's viewable in billing, and it'll show on the billing accounts uh, right where your scanned documents do. Alternatively, or additionally, you can also send it into Find It. Uh, Capture It, which we'll talk about in some detail later, uh, is something that allows us to import files into Metatech. I'm sorry, into Find It. Uh, in this case, we're just using that backend import functionality. Uh, we still convert those into single page tip for Find It, and we store the metadata as well to allow you to search for it there. Again, here's, a, here's an example of a raw 835. Not very readable um, unless you're very familiar with electronic claims. And this is the, an example of the formatted template that we turn it into. Uh, you can see all the charges, the explanation codes at the bottom, uh, much more readable for a user. Similarly, on the 837 side, uh, we can turn raw 837s into UBO4s. Uh, again, we can put that into PDF text or TIFF, send it into Find It or into Metatech through the ECM, and the same options to validate against Metatech's DR. Raw 837, again, not very readable at all unless you're familiar with the codes. Um, we apply it over a UBO4 template. There are a number of options here. Um, some hospitals need the red forms. We can go ahead and overlay on a red UBO4. Uh, the potential concern there, if you're going to Meditech scanning and archiving, is of course the red form will take up more space on the image server. Um, we also have some customers that preferred a plain text formatted file. So it doesn't have all the grid boxes. Uh, most are choosing the grayscale. So now I'm going to thank turn you. it back over to Todd. Oh, go ahead. Oh, that's, that's a thank you. So we'll talk a little bit about DISC, which is our document imaging and scanning conversion technology. So this is actually a tool set, and I don't know if we have on the next slide, I think we have a, a little bit of a brief overview. Uh, a number of years back when customers were, were pretty heavily and frantically moving from legacy systems into the Meditech 6.0 world, we spent a, an awful lot of time developing technologies and tools to be able to convert legacy images. So in essence, a number of customers were moving off of legacy scanning systems that were either no longer supported by that vendor, which may have been products like Omtool and some of the others. They had some technologies that maybe they moved away from. Highland as well moved away from some, some legacy technologies like Valco. And with that, those customers were looking for folks to help them migrate that legacy data to Metatech's eChart or, you know, or ultimately other additional systems. So in this case, DISC is our, is our service solution set that we provide to customers. It's, it's all inclusive, and what we do is we go ahead and, and dive into your legacy system. We pull out all the associated metadata and scans and convert those into a format readily importable or indexable into Metatech. Um, I think that's kind of the high level here. Steve's going to dive a bit more into that. Ultimately, the data is going to end up in your electronic chart as part of your medical uh, or as part of your electronic legal record. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Steve to kind of walk into some of the details here. Actually, I don't know if we have any more details other than maybe mentioning a few of the vendors that we've spent some time working with. This is just a list or a subset of some of the key vendors that we've done a number of conversions from. I'm pretty confident we're at a couple hundred conversions, and, and Steve, you'd have to correct me if I'm wrong here, but well over a billion pages served. So yeah, I'll turn it back over to Steve. Conversions. We've definitely done a couple hundred conversions. We've converted from dozens of vendors. Uh, the list on the screen here is just some of the current ones that we're doing, some of the more common ones that we see. Um, we're open to looking at uh, extracting or converting from any vendor. Um, so we don't feel like this list is restrictive. Um, and that's the disk process in a nutshell. Um, we convert everything using the Metatech 1375 spec. The key elements there are the medical record number, account number, and form ID. So if we know that about any given document or get it out of a system somehow, 
we can convert those into MetaTech into the e-chart to make them viewable for your HIM staff. And Steve, we also do business office as part of our conversion activities if, if desired, correct? Yes, we do. A um, number of options for, for business office conversions. Uh, we will get into find it here in a little bit, uh, which is designed for business office documents, uh, but we do convert into MetaTech using their business office scanning spec. Uh, again, whatever metadata is available, we'll use it for that conversion to make sure that gets into MetaTech as well. Thank you. So next up is our historical archive viewer. And just a bit of background on that, and this is something that, that a technology that we've really come to enjoy. I, I believe it helps our customers save an awful lot of time. But we had a number of customers that were migrating to Meditech 6 uh, a number of years back and had a significant number of Meditech archives. So they've been running on Meditech Magic for 10, 12, 15 years, and they had a tremendous amount of archives that had been stored onto a legacy scanning technology. When we went to migrate those over, they recognized that the process for validating those in the Meditech scanning and archiving tool was going to take a bit more time and resources than they had available to them at that time. So what they asked us is if we could park all the data into a SQL database and then provide some sort of front end user interface that made it really, really easy for users to find those archives without having to spend a lot of time indexing those in Meditech, being that their resources were so limited. So we built the viewer on behalf of the request of a number of customers. And since then, it's become a very popular tool for our customers to use during migrations when either a legacy system has to be shut off very quickly uh, due to maintenance concerns or cost of maintenance concerns, or there, there's sometimes server issues where they're concerned that the hardware may fail. Um, next slide, please. So I'm going to turn it over to Steve, and what he's going to do is just kind of walk you through some of the general details of the viewer itself. And like I said, it's a piece of software and a user interface that allows for a quick and rapid discovery of, of documents that have been converted from legacy systems. Thanks, Todd. Uh, the historical archive viewer has evolved quite a bit, uh, but this is how it originally started, um, with documents that weren't really a good fit for a Metatext 1375 conversion. So when I spoke about disk just a minute ago, I mentioned that you need to have a medical record number, account number, and form ID. Well, there are certainly many legacy systems out there where documents are stored at the patient level and there is no account number to use uh, to be sent into Meditech. So because of that, the historical archive viewer came to be. And it takes whatever metadata that is available, stores, stores it in a SQL database, and then allows that to be searchable within the viewer. Uh, we're going to go through the viewer in a little more detail in a minute. So again, most common reasons for using the historical archive viewer, uh, missing metadata. Uh, metadata doesn't match well with the 1375 conversion specifications. Uh, obsolete data for chart max is a, is a big one. Uh, and it's similar with other legacy systems. If there's versioning, um, customers may only want the most recent version to be imported into Meditech. Uh, otherwise, if they're dealing with millions of documents, they may only want the most recent number of years or something along those lines, but they don't want to get rid of the older documents completely. In that case, they may opt for a, a blended approach where they use the historical archive viewer for the obsolete or older documents and convert the newer, more relevant documents into Meditech. Uh, and certainly some customers um, have smaller systems that maybe they didn't think about when they migrated to Meditech. And there is a certain effort involved with the validation for any conversion into Meditech's e-chart. Uh, so depending on the size of the legacy system, if it's something small and less frequently used, some customers have found that the historical archive viewer is a good option for that. So next, I'm just going to walk through some screenshots that show a typical workflow for how documents are pulled up in the historical archive viewer. So this is how it looks uh, when you first sign in. The prompts on the left are somewhat customizable. I believe we can have up to six search keys. Uh, so some customers are commonly searching by social security number. If that metadata was available in the legacy system and we can put it into our database, then we can add the social security number search here as well. So 
So usually they'll start by searching for patient name or really anything that they want, but the patient name or any of these fields are, are wildcard accessible. So I can enter in a, a partial name and click search. And that's going to bring up my account number lookup. Uh, again, this is all tied to whatever metadata is available and gets built into the SQL database. So if you have different relevant fields, encounter number or something like that, uh, that can be added. So I find the account that I want and select it. And it brings up all of the documents that I have stored. The nice, another nice feature about the historical archive viewer is that it supports multiple file types. So conversion, disk conversions into MetaTech require that everything gets converted into a single page TIFF file. The historical archive viewer just leaves it in its native format. So in this case with this account, you can see that I have PDF files, text files, rich text files, uh, TIFFs, PNGs. Um, they all work within this one viewer. So here I've selected the first PDF file. Uh, as things get selected, the header gets filled out. We have patient name, patient number, account number, and birth date. Uh, within the document itself, I can zoom in. I can move from page to page and rotate as needed. Uh, I can print off the single document here. I can close the patient if I wanted to go to the next search. Also, if I click on the account box, I'm able to highlight or check off all of the documents. So if I needed to output all of the documents that are in the viewer for a given account, I just check that off. I can go ahead and hit print and print those out. There is an administrative feature. So I clicked on a gear icon up in the top right, and here I have user management and log viewer. There are two types of users available within the system, an administrative user and a test user. Oh, sorry, a regular user. And the regular users don't have these user management options, and they also cannot see the log viewer. But anyone who's set up as an administrator can add other users to the viewer. So we are tracking our activity within the viewer for auditing purposes. Uh, here we can see the, the login, the search that was done, what was viewed. Um, had I actually printed the document, there would be an action of P here for print to show that that had happened as well. You can search by a given date, a given user, uh, to see what was done within the viewer itself. Uh, that, that wraps up Historical Archive Viewer. I don't know if you wanted to add anything. No, that was perfect. Thank you so much. So again, next up is Find It. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. That is our optical character recognition tool that we built for Meditech's business office. It's actually been an evolving technology. A number of years ago, we partnered with Meditech to develop a technology that could integrate with the business office scanning component and provide full text search of images that were scanned through Meditech. The goal there to not modify or impact the Meditech scanning workflow, but be able to provide a back-end technology that could add that additional functionality, which is that full-text search. Since then, the technology has also evolved to help some customers in standalone environments, and Steve will talk a little bit about Capture It here in a bit, to outline how that, that functionality has been enabled. But otherwise, Find It has been very well received, and, and we continue to grow that technology to provide new feature and function for our customers. I'm going to turn it over to Steve so he can walk you through a bit of the technical details as well as the workflow. Thank you, Todd. Uh, so here's just a, a workflow of how Find It can work in a Meditech environment as well as with legacy documents if they're loaded in. Uh, so in conjunction with Meditech, the scans still reside on the image archive server. Um, we don't change any of the files through Find It. We just view them using a web service. So when a user needs to see it, the scanning server is queried and it shows up in the viewer. Uh, there are a number of services that run to help us load all of the data into Find It. We use an OCR service to make all of the text searchable on any of the given documents. Um, the backfiller service is fueled by NPR reports run out of the Meditech system. So any of the document tags that are applied to a business office scan 
flow in to find it to make it viewable in a, in a similar manner. So all of the archive keys, all of the form IDs that are used. So that the searching is, is very similar within Find It as it is within MetaTech. Historical images, um, if those are also loaded into Find It, those don't have to be on the MetaTech server. They could be in some other location. They could be on the Find It server itself or anywhere else that's network accessible and it's retrieved in a similar manner. I'm going to walk through some of the navigation within Find It, calling out some of the features as we go. Launching Find It, it's a client-based system, so users will have a Find It icon that they launch. Um, we are looking at some other launch options from MedTech. Within Find It, just walking through some of these prompts here. Uh, the cabinet generally corresponds to the MetaTech application, but it's configurable to be anything that you want. So if you are having legacy documents in here from OnBase, we could name a cabinet OnBase and, and put them there. Um, if there's a business office application that you don't have through MetaTech, but you want to store scans under it, we can configure it that way as well. Archive keys, again, those come across from MetaTech from the NPR reports. Um, if there's a legacy system, we would figure out what the corresponding values would be for archive keys and we build it within the database. So when you're searching for a document, a lot of the uh, values are optional to fill out. Um, of course, the more you fill out, the quicker you may find your results. But right what's on the screen now is similar to how searching is done within Meditech's business office scanning. Uh, searching with AP, we know we're looking for an invoice within these dates, and then we can fill in the archive keys to narrow it down. Document handling within the document itself um, has all of the navigation you would expect, the ability to zoom, rotate, um, navigate between pages, I particularly like the next and previous matching result, which we'll talk about a little bit more with the content searching, redaction, and printing. Again, any of the rotating that's done or redacting that's done does not change the original image on the MetaTech scanning server. Um, that is left intact. It is simply done for viewing purposes if you're rotating. If you're redacting, you're able to download the document with those redactions or print with those redactions. So this is a user, when they first enter into the Find It solution, they're going to choose a cabinet. Again, these are corresponding to Meditech Business Office application. Uh, security is controlled on the cabinet level. So users that maybe shouldn't have access to billing won't be able to get to billing documents. After I've selected bar, all of the different archive keys I have associated with any bar forms populate in. Form types, whatever's been defined um, as MIS archive forms so business office scanning will, will show up here. So a user can select a form type. Once they selected the form type, it's a little bit hidden here, but the keys that are associated with that specific form type show. So where we had some five or six keys before, now we only have two because this form is only set up to be tagged with two within MetaTech. Uh, we can apply the scan date range, and then once we've done that with the cabinet form type, scan date range, and archive keys, we have the same search functionality. What we really add is the content terms. So again, any text that appears on a document is searchable within Find It. So in the case of an EOB, which tends to be one of the documents with the biggest benefit, there could be hundreds of accounts across hundreds of pages, and you need to find the specific page you're looking for. So in this case, as a user, I'm searching for my favorite patient, banana cake. And it's returned that there was an EOB associated with banana cake, um, a 15-page EOB. And my account appears on pages 12, 13, 14, and 15. 
I can hover over each of the pages and it shows a snippet of text where that result was found. So if you can imagine reviewing hundreds of pages uh, from your search results, hovering over each document may help you more quickly identify what you're looking for. Expanding out any of the pages will show me what archive values were actually assigned to the document. So within Meditech, this EOB was associated with batch number 123 and the insurance company, Health Insurance Company. The redaction feature. So due to some feedback from customers, um, we added the ability to redact in different colors rather than strictly black and running a printer out of toner. Uh, so you see here I've got a gray redaction box. This one is white with border. I can also do plain white and plain black as well. So maybe you've added many, many redactions to a page and you're not sure if you've covered up something you shouldn't have. So up here towards the top, there's the ability to hide redaction. And that quickly removes all the redactions so I can see what was underneath. I can then verify that everything looks good. Show redactions to put everything back in place. Um, these redactions save by the session. So they'll all remain in place while I'm processing documents until I actually close out of the Find It software. Again, at the top, I have the ability to move between each page, between matching results. I can enter in a specific page, uh, rotate, zoom, download. And when I print out, I can uh, pick specific pages that I want to print. So if I have a 100-page document, I only want pages 20 to 30, I can do that. If I want to print pages 21, 27, and 39, I can do that as well. Todd, that sums up my run-through for Find It. Thank you. So it's also worth noting that there is a, a pretty advanced user audit function built into this. So if there's concerns about people accessing data they shouldn't be beyond, so let's let's assume that they have security that allows them to look at certain things. You can also go look into the audit logs and, and there it's fairly advanced feature set to help you with auditing purposes. In addition, I, I know we talked about business office and I don't think we're gonna dive into this a bit further. But, but it is worth noting that we've had a number of customers ask us about clinical workflows and how this technology could work with clinical documentation, maybe in nursing or PCS within the Meditech application. That is something we still continue to explore with Meditech and not something completely out of order, but, but not something that's supported today. So I just wanted to mention that, that we look at clinical workflows, but today this product has been fully optimized for business office access and usability. Next slide, please. And thanks, Steve. So next we're going to talk a bit about Capture It. And, and Capture It, just to give you a bit of background, was initially developed and in, in partner, we partnered with a magic hospital that was looking for some type of business office equivalent that they could utilize in the short term for a subset of documents. And I believe at the time it was, it was like EOBs and maybe requisition some other, other things in their business office. And what we were able to do is develop Capture It, which is a utility for importing documents and to find it. And ultimately what it does is it, it provides a link to your scanning technology. So if you're using you know, an HP scanner or some other type of scanner at your, at your desktop, we would create a directory that allows you to drag and drop the images into that and then be able to put those into a, a format that's appropriate for use and find it. That then makes those images fully text searchable and, and accessible. And, and that was very desirable to some of our customers who were looking for a short-term business office product or maybe a customer who just was looking for something to store HR documents and make them text searchable or some other type of document format that they were currently storing in a network folder but didn't have the availability to uh, fully text search those. I'm going to turn it back over to, Ski, oh, back over to Steve and he's going to walk you through some of the details as well as show you the user interface here. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Todd. So Capture It is running in the background on a user's machine um, waiting for incoming scans, either on that machine itself or some network accessible folder. Um, when a scanned PDF comes in, these are the two indicators that a user would see on their screen. Um, a box that tells them a document's been found, 
and that a new file is received, and it actually splits the file into single page TIFF at that time, again, because that's also how Find It stores files on the back end. This is what the Capture It look, UI looks like, um, fairly simple. You would choose an application that's going to correspond to the cabinet within Find It. Choose a form ID that's going to be assigned as well. And once the form ID is filled out, the archive keys that have been defined populate in. So in this case, the user is going to say it's batch 123, the insurance is Blue Cross, the batch date defaults in, uh, but can be changed. Within the document itself, um, there's similar functionality uh, as far as moving from page to page, zooming in and out, rotating. Uh, in this case, the rotations will save before filing, uh, as well as the ability to remove any individual pages that don't belong. So it could be a 30-page document that was scanned in, but there are three or four blank pages. Those can be removed. Um, once the document looks good, everything's been tagged to it, user can click accept, and that flows into find it. Um, the OTR will run over it, and then all the text will be searchable, just like everything else that resides in the find it application. Uh, anything that was scanned in error or doesn't belong in find it can simply be rejected, and it'll move on or wait for the next document. That's Capture It. Todd, I'll turn it back over to you for Rapid Filer. Thanks. So again, we'll talk a little bit about Rapid Filer here. And, and this was another technology, once again, built with a customer. We had a customer identify a need. They just so happened to be using our, our fax technology and fax and report distribution technology called Communication Director. And with that, they're receiving a number of inbound faxes, primarily lab orders from a, a number of different ambulatory clinics. And what they were doing is, from a workflow perspective, is they're printing those documents and then they were rescanning them into Meditech. And the customer asked us, said, hey, you know, based on, on some of the other things that you've done for us, including data conversions, would it be possible to automate those faxes and, and drop them right into, into Meditech as part of the, the electronic chart? We uh, looked at that technology and from there developed Rapid Filer. So Rapid Filer is intended to do, to do just that. Initially, it was just faxes from our communication director product. But now it can, for the most part, be an image that you want, to, uh, you want to get in there and you've got some metadata associated with it that we can capture and be able to, in essence, package that for the ECM filer. And that's the Meditech index or import tool that allows for those images to be dropped into the chart. I'm going to turn it over to Steve so he can walk you through the workflow. But in essence, this is a technology, like I said, that we built with a customer. And hopefully provides tremendous value in, in automating a function that was that was completely manual in the past. Steven? Thank you. Yeah, as Todd mentioned, Rapid Filer essentially handles incoming files, allows them to be created in the Meditech ECM spec and, and fed into Meditech through the cold feed ECM filer to appear uh, within Meditech's eChart. So the keys for the Meditech ECM filer are similar to those that are required for the Meditech conversion for the 1375, um, unit number and account number, and application and form ID. Uh, we can also tie Rapid Filer into DR, again, to avoid those rejections. Uh, in this case, to the, the lookup of accounts is directly into DR, making it a little more robust for finding the correct account for incoming documents. I'm going to step through some of the workflow within Rapid Filer. So Rapid Filer, as with most of the applications we've shown you today, is highly configurable. Uh, application and form ID, we can have those default in if a given folder is always associated with a, a certain type. Um, if that's not the case, we could leave that without a default, and users can choose whatever applications we have set up, as well as whatever form IDs we have set up. Um, the form IDs need to match what's in Meditech and the Medical Record Documents Dictionary to allow the form to ultimately be filed. So 
So choosing lab, choosing results as my form ID. Now I've hit look up patient. Again, this can support wild carding and it's tied into Meditech's ADM visit table to make sure we choose a valid account before we send anything into the ECM filer. I've done my wildcard, done my search. I see that there's three accounts associated with Bugs Bunny. I find the one that I want and select it. So now I've got my unit number and account number defined, my application and form ID. If I'm done processing the document and I'm confident it looks good, I could hit accept and just send it on its way. Let's say I'm not sure what to do with the document yet or someone else needs to review it. I can move a document. So I have these other folders defined. Um, they could have usernames or anything like that. In this case, we're going to use RAD holding because someone else needs to handle it, but it needs to wait. So I would move it from the root folder to RAD holding. It would go off my queue until someone else is ready to review it. The documents come in as multi-page PDFs into Rapid Filer. Um, specifically in the case of incoming faxes as well as other documents as well, you may have information that's split across several accounts. Um, you may also have unwanted pages again. So within Rapid Filer itself, you can split the document into its individual pages. In this case, it was a three-page PDF. And now I'm able to evaluate each page individually. So if it, this one belongs to a different account, I can process it separately. Similarly, if I find the pages two and three belong together, I can merge them back together to be processed as one when they go over to Meditech. So we also have the same navigation that you've seen in some of our other applications, the ability to zoom, move from page to page, rotate. Uh, the rotate will save before filing it through the ECM filer. Um, if the document is not needed, we can reject it and it gets removed from the queue. And I wanted to mention um, earlier, I talked about the remit piece with 835 and 837s. And we can check those using our validation to see if they have a valid UCRN or account number. And if they don't, move them aside for review. Well, there are a couple options for such a review. Um, someone can manually look at the file, correct the file name, and send it on its way. Um, but we've also tied that into Rapid Filer uh, so that someone can actually look at the document, um, perform the lookup into Meditex DR, and find the correct account that it belongs to and then send it along to Meditech, um, thus avoiding the rejection on the Meditech side and really proactively tagging it with the correct account. Todd, did you want to add anything else about Rapid Filer? No, that was perfect. Thank you. So, gang, I know we finished a bit early, and, and we will turn it back over to um, the rest of the team here, but wanted to see if there were going to be any questions, as well as thank you all for uh, your participation here, and please feel free to ask any questions that, that you may see fit. We've got plenty of time. Okay, I do want to just remind everyone, if you do have a question, please put it into the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. And the first question that we have is, can you convert to systems other than SCA? Sure. So this is Todd. I'll go ahead and speak to this. Yes, we can convert to most systems. We'd be glad to review any import specs that any vendors that you're working with might be able to provide you. Generally, they're a one-page spec, and, it, and it's something that we can generally conform to. Thank you. Okay, the next question. Can you convert reports from legacy, acute, and ambulatory HCIS and ACA? I'm sorry, SCA? And then the second part of that question is, and how does that process work? This is Todd once again. I'll go ahead and address that. So if you have a report in an existing medical record system or even a legacy, a legacy system, if, you can, if it's printable, we can typically get to that. We'll automate that, that print 
job or, or in essence that report will automate it out of the system. We'll convert that into a format that then is palatable for meta text scanning and archiving. So in essence, if, if the report is accessible, we'll, we'll convert that to the single page TIFF that's required for meta text scanning and archiving, and then utilize the meta tech indexing tool to make that available in scanning and archiving as part of your e-chart. Hopefully that answers that question, and I'd be glad uh, to address a follow-up if there are any follow-ups on that particular question. Thank you. Okay, another question is, does Find It work for legacy business office documents as well as off business office scans in SCA? So that's a great question, and, and Find It can actually provide OCR to images imported into the Meditech business office module from legacy solutions. It, it can also apply OCR to images not imported. Um, so there, there's a number as well as apply, I should say, as well as apply OCR to newly scanned images in scanning and archiving. So when we implement Find It, we actually work with you to understand what type of images are available. Some of our customers have had scanning and archiving implemented for a number of years and have been using it for a number of years. And, and thus would like those images that have already been scanned into Meditech over the past three or four or five years to be accessible within Find It. So we will work with you to identify which those images, which images those are, and we'll make sure that those are, are built into the Find It technology so that the OSR can be applied to all of those legacy scans. In addition, it's going to continue to work with all the new stuff that's scanned into Meditech and, and ultimately provide access to both the historical as well as the new documents that have been scanned into Meditech. Lastly, we have a number of customers who have historical documents that they just they don't feel that there's a need to put those into Meditech scanning and archiving. And so as part of that, that find it implementation, if you've got some legacy ones that you want OCR applied, but you don't necessarily think that they're appropriate for Meditech, we can, we can apply OCR to those as well and make those available. Thank you. Okay, the next question is, if you are on Meditech 5.67, will the scan documents import into Meditech 6.0? That is a great question. Steve, what are your thoughts on that? I think I have an answer, but I wanted to maybe give you a first shout at that. Sure. Uh, would you mind repeating that question just one more time? Yes. If you are on Meditech 5.67, will the scan documents import into Meditech 6.0? So generally, if you're going from client-server 567 to, to Meditech 60, and these reside in the Meditech e chart in the existing 567 environment. I believe Meditech's chart to chart conversions should pick those up. Um, but if there are instances for some reason where that is not going to happen, uh, we can look at getting those scan documents out um, using NPR reports to find the appropriate metadata and formatting them for import into 60. Okay, the next question is, does Find It work for medical records in SCA as well as business office scanning? This is Todd. I'll go ahead and address that. So the workflow today is optimized for business office. So from a medical record perspective, if, if the image were a medical record image but more associated at, at an account level or even at a patient level associated with the business office, then, then absolutely yes. But otherwise, from a, from a clinical workflow perspective, like I shared earlier, we are looking at whether we can optimize the workflow and provide a viable functional workflow for our clinical users with this existing technology, and that is something we continue to investigate with both Meditech and our customers. Thank you. Okay. I just want to give everyone one more option to enter any questions into the question box and while we wait to see if any come in. Uh, I do want to let everyone know that once the webinar is over, if you have any additional questions, you can please contact Steve or Todd, and their contact information is up on the screen right now. Or you can email education at museweb.org, and we will make sure Steve and Todd get these questions also. So it looks like that is all the questions for today. I'd like to thank Steve and Todd for your presentation. And I'd also like to thank everyone for attending and participating in this news webinar. And this concludes the webinar, and everyone have a great afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.